So now what we're going to do is uh, a, a death meditation that combines the meditation on the elements. So we're going to put two together, and some of you will know this meditation on the eight stages at the time of death. So um, <clears throat> what we're doing here now is preparing our mind for the way the consciousness will exit the form. <coughs> And so we've connected with the fact that there is uh, earth, heat, air, water, all of these things are <clears throat> within the body, and all of them support consciousness. They support our experience, but they are not the self. And um, so we've kind of gotten familiar to you know, the fact that we have an experience of them, but now we're going to work through the way um, we will exit. And um, this is a meditation that if you ever go into Tantra or if you start really building a strong daily practice, this becomes a very um, common series to do. So those of you that practice Tantra <clears throat> probably do a version of this every single day. So it's, it's worth kind of getting used to. This particular meditation really comes in handy. And it also prepares your mind in a really happy way for what's going to happen to you at death, so you're not scared. Um, <clears throat> because as the body stops cooperating, we can become really agitated. And if you've ever been with anyone who's dying, people get really scared about the lack of control um, as you know they're suffering from some illness or old age. So if you're mentally prepared, what's going to happen as your consciousness starts to go, before it happens, then when it does happen, you think, ah, oh, it's just the body. It's just the body. It's just the body. And this is normal, and it's just a reminder to connect with my path. All these weird things happening physically are just that. They're physical. I don't have to worry. Come back to my path. So um, it's, it's a really helpful way to keep a stable mind when you yourself are dying. You also do this every single day when you fall asleep, but in a very, very quick way, so quick that you miss it. Um, but if you've ever been woken up at the wrong time and feel that strange heaviness where you can't move, you know, every once in a while you get woken at a weird time and you're like paralyzed. Not just heaviness that you have every morning, right? But the, um, the, the paralysis, that weird thing that sometimes happens, that's, um, that's when the earth element isn't supporting consciousness yet, right? So that feeling will happen as you die, and if you know, then you're prepared, and you think, oh, just the earth element, classic earth element, right? You know, you're not worried. You think, it's just the body. It's all right. <laughs> you served me well. Thanks, old buddy. All right, moving on. Yeah, um, and if you're with someone who's dying, it can help you not be freaked out by what you see in them. It can help you hold the space for them and not bring all your baggage and all of your fear to their bedside. You can just reassure them this is normal and remind them of whatever their spiritual path is. If they don't have a spiritual path, remind them of all the good things they've done in this life that they're leaving behind. You know, so when you see this happening with someone, um, then you don't have to be afraid. It just makes you wake up and get organized and think, oh, it's happening. Okay. Yep. Let's prioritize. Let's not get lost in petty, silly things. Let's not get lost in old family dramas. Now is the time to touch the important things, to remember all the love, to remember all of the benefit that happened in this life, you know? So, <clears throat> so this is an important meditation, and it's bringing together um, a little bit of what happened with this corpse meditation um, and a lot of what happened with the elements meditation. So, um, Again, getting yourself good posture. <clears throat> and you can add to your pre existing motivation by meditating on death to make life meaningful. I'm meditating on death to use death in the best way.
and gathering your focus inward. So now picture that it's you, yourself, on a deathbed, but you're not dead yet. Imagine you're lying in a bed, and it's your best case scenario. Maybe you're at home, or in a very kind hospice situation, or a hospital that's friendly. and that you know that you're dying. Imagine this is your best case scenario death. And the doctors have told you, death is probably going to happen in the next day or so. So there you are. And imagine as you're lying there that you have told all of your friends and all of your family how much you love them, all of the things you've learned from them, that you're so happy you shared this life with them. Imagine you've said all those things and they know it. Imagine that you've forgiven everyone you need to forgive. If you've asked forgiveness of everyone you need to ask forgiveness of. And imagine that all of your old possessions were organized to be distributed in a way that makes your mind happy, to charities, to family, and that you have a very released mind regarding your old possessions, not clinging to them. And as you're lying there, thinking about these things, your mind is peaceful. And you start to notice, physically, the body feeling quite heavy. And you might want to move your arm to get a glass of water, but it moves very slowly. Almost as if you're sinking in the bed. And as that happens, you think, ah, The earth element in my body is no longer able to support consciousness. It's only death. I don't need to be afraid. And internally, you have a vision of a mirage, like water shimmering on a hot road. And this shimmering in your mind's eye is just a symptom of that earth element dissolving. And 
And when you see it, you remember your spiritual path. You remember your internal refuge. And you prepare yourself for your mind becoming more subtle. People still come in and out of your room. Nurses might check on you. And you wish them well. But you're starting to disengage from them. Those people with whom you have a strong karmic connection, of course you will meet again. But right now, letting go. And then you become aware that your mouth is dry and your eyes are dry. And it's a little bit difficult to hear And it's a little uncomfortable. But you think, it is just my body. Just a sign death is coming. This discomfort will pass. It's a sign the water element is no longer able to support consciousness. And so now, instead of feeling heavy, it feels a bit like you're being swept away, a little unbalanced. And internally, there's a vision of billowing smoke or steam. And you see it and think this is just the water element dissolving. I must remember my spiritual path. And you become aware that the body is getting a little bit cold, especially your hands and feet. And normally in life, this might annoy you, but now you remember it's just the body. It means the fire element in the body can't support my consciousness anymore. I'm just dying. It's happened millions of times. I don't need to be afraid. And internally, there's a vision of fire sparks against a night sky. Like someone stirring up a campfire. And this internal vision just means fire is dissolving. And you remember your spiritual path. Kindness, compassion, connecting with that refuge.
And then you notice it's difficult to breathe and that the circulation is very slow. There's a shallow breath in and a long raggedy breath out. And you know there's no need to be afraid. <coughs> this means the pain of this life is almost finished. Soon your mind will become far more subtle, more subtle than it's been most of its life. It just means this body is wearing out. And you see a vision of a weak flame, like a candle about to go out, flickering blue and red in your mind's eye. And it's just the air element dissolving. You are reminded to reconnect with compassion with bodhicitta, all those things you value. And the breath stops, and the heart stops, and the people around you are processing their grief, the nurses are organizing different things. But you're still in your body. Only now there is no pain. And there's a radiant vision of white. Brilliant white. And you remember your path of compassion. And the radiant white becomes radiant red, like a sunset, warm. The mind becoming even more subtle. The worries, the stresses of the life dissolving. which fades to black, like being completely unconscious. And then the radiant clear light, brilliant like a dawn, cloudless sky and your mind is at its most subtle. The disillusion of subject and object. And you use the fact that the mind is at its most subtle to realize emptiness directly. Imagine that you use this opportunity to deeply connect with reality. And you do this with the intention of bodhicitta.
and the consciousness leaves the body. And as the consciousness leaves the body, you might notice your old friends and family and wish them well. You might see all sorts of projections and appearances, like being in a dream state. But imagine that you remember not to be distracted. You remember your spiritual refuge and path. And your mind travels on a body of wind, very subtle energy. And your mind on this very subtle wind energy is drawn karmically to new parents. And imagine that due to all the positive activities of your previous life, you're drawn to new parents magnetically that are very ethical and very kind. And you approach the womb of your new mother and the visions reverse. From clear light to blackness. To red. To white. To the flickering flame. To the fire sparks. To the billowing smoke. To the mirage, that shimmering water. And you fully enter your new mother's womb. Imagine your new form beginning to grow, healthy and strong. But most importantly, carrying the positive habits from the past. Carrying your patience, your wisdom, your compassion and kindness. all of your realizations, if you've developed them, all of your altruistic intentions. So as your new body develops, imagine it carrying with that mind stream pervaded by beneficial habits. and think to yourself, may my death, my intermediate state, and my rebirth go in this way, continuing my path without interruption. <clears throat>
and adding any personal aspirations to yourself? In what way do you want to make your death meaningful? May the precious Bodhi mind that has not yet been born arise and grow. May that which has been born have no decline, but increase forevermore. <laughs> 